What is going on, beautiful people? Jacob here, Miami Dolphins Syndicate. We got Indianapolis Colts, Miami Dolphins Preview, Week 7. We will have Miami Dolphins games every single weekend for the rest of the regular season. Let's get into the preview. Miami Dolphins lead the all-time series over the Colts, 48 to 28. 20 more wins over the Colts. However, recent history has not been as kind to the Dolphins. Two and seven in their last games going against the Indianapolis Colts. All of one have been one-score games, all of those nine games, and that one that was not a one-score game was the last time these two teams faced off a 27 to 17 final score up in Indianapolis. Actually, excuse me, it was down here in Miami. It was game number two that the Dolphins were without Tua Tagovailoa, one of his many injury stints in his career. This time, a broken rib that he sustained against the Buffalo Bills in week two that placed him on, on, on our, and it was Jacoby Brissett that got the start for the Dolphins that day. 199 yards through the air, a game that was dominated by a player who will not feature in the game on Sunday. That being Jonathan Taylor had over 100 yards on the ground, got into the end zone as the Indianapolis Colts pretty comfortably handled the Miami Dolphins that day. Getting now into the injuries, we just talked about them briefly. Jonathan Taylor will miss the game. Third game that he has missed due to high ankle sprain. When he initially sustained the injury, the team basically came out and said that it was a non-severe high ankle sprain, but this is the third game that he's missed with it, so it seems like a pretty common high ankle sprain. Really big loss. Arguably the Colts, I don't even know if it's really arguably, the Colts' best player, Jonathan Taylor, most impactful player, uh, can really sustain drives for them. Uh, Jonathan Taylor missing the game with a high ankle sprain. And then the wide receiver room is really weird. Michael Pittman has been going from one end to the spectrum when it comes to injury reports for the last two weeks. Last week, they flirted with him going on the injured reserve. He ultimately ended up playing and scoring a touchdown. And then this week, again, those same reports come back about him potentially going on IR for a back injury. Misses practice, then comes back in a full participation on Thursday, and then Friday does not practice again. So your guess is as good as mine, whether they'll be with Michael Pittman Jr. And Josh Downs has also been dealing with an injury, this time a toe injury, most likely toe turf, uh, was limited throughout all of practice last week same thing with Michael Pittman ended up playing ended up scoring as well same thing this week did not practice on Wednesday limited uh, today and on Thursday and officially is questionable but the biggest news is that they will finally see Anthony Richardson return to the field with an oblique injury big guy really athletic but has sustained his fair share of injuries so far coming into the league and we will talk about later whether I think this team is better with Anthony Richardson or with Joe Flacco but all signs indicate he is good to go and will be getting the start for the Colts. As for the Miami Dolphins, as about a optimistic injury report as we've gotten all season long, Devon A. Chan has officially cleared concussion protocol, so he will be in the lineup getting the start for the Miami Dolphins back on Sunday after coming out in the, the game against the New England Patriots. Obviously, we had the bye week last week, so not missing any time does Devon A. Chan. He will be back a go. Uh, the player with the biggest chance to miss the game, the best player with the biggest chance to miss the game, uh, is Javon Holland, who is officially listed as doubtful with his hand injury, broke a bone in his hand, and under Underway, some surgery uh, is limited was expected to miss a couple games so the fact that he's even in contention to come back this game I think is a really good sign for where he's at in his progress to come back to the team but he is likely to be out doubtful there's a bunch of guys that are listed as officially questionable including Odell Blake Ferguson Austin Jackson David Long Emmanuel Ogba and Scott Thompson Scott Thompson's not starting so doesn't really matter uh, for him. He'll be just called upon on the bench if need. Emmanuel Ogba of the bunch, just based off reports I've heard from the questionable group, is the most likely to miss. He's fighting to try to get to the game. Uh, but a pretty good injury report. A bunch of questionables. Nobody confirmed out as of yet, although I do expect Javon Hall to miss the game, as well as big comeback for Devon A. Chan coming back from his concussion. Now here's when things get weird. The Indianapolis Colts... As a team, with Anthony Richardson coming to the season, I was really high on them. Shane Steichen, high-octane offense. I think they ran the most plays last season. And I felt really good seeing what I saw from Anthony Richardson last year. And then comes out week one, has that big throw, big highlight play. But other than that, there is still a lot to be seen that we haven't seen from Anthony Richardson. We know the highlight plays are there. You know the athleticism. You know the pop. You know that he's going to do something that makes you say, wow, right? But it's everything else with Anthony Richardson that you're not quite sure yet whether he is good enough to take this Colts team to the next level. Uh, there's been multiple instances, simple, underneath, intermediate routes that he sailed. One in particular that just comes to mind, there was, a, there was a, I think, a third and three or a fourth and three. Josh, ja Josh Downs runs a very simple out route concept. Josh Downs, not the biggest wide receiver in the world, 5'10". I don't know if two Josh Downs would have caught the ball standing on each other's shoulders. He sailed it that much, uh, and the team either had to punt or turnover on downs. I don't remember what the case was. But 
the 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 high upside is there with Anthony Richardson, but the low side is also certainly there. And each individual play, you're not really sure what you're going to get. So the question comes in that Donovan talked about earlier in the week was, is this Colts team better with Anthony Richardson in the lineup or Joe Flacco in the lineup? And as odd as it is to say from a first-round pick with as much athleticism and much big play ability that Anthony Richardson has, I believe this team is better in the lineup with, or better with Joe Flacco in the lineup as opposed to Anthony Richardson. I think the offense runs a whole heck of a lot smoother, and you just look at their point holes. Every single game with Joe Flacco either coming in relief or getting the start scored 20 points or more. But look at the wide receiver numbers. Michael Pittman, first three games, pretty pitiful, especially if you have him fantasy football. You know how bad uh, Michael Pittman was the first few weeks. Gets in the end zone the last couple weeks for the Colts. Josh Downs has come back and has really been a, a bright spark for this Colts offense. A Colts offense that, yes, they put up all those points, but they put up all those points without Jonathan Taylor, who misses another game. Joe Flacco, just the experienced veteran that he is, we saw how successful he can be in an offense that is well-designed with good weapons, with a good offensive line. We saw that last year with the Cleveland Browns. Got them to the playoffs. Nearly went to Houston and beat them. I shouldn't say nearly. They, they nearly beat them in the first half. Second half, Texans just did play Texans football. Star-studded offense. Great defense. Defensive minded head coach ended up taking that game. But what, so far, what we've seen from them is Joe Flacco has replicated what we saw from him in that Colts offense, or excuse me, that Browns offense, and has taken it over here to the Colts. He goes back to the bench, and Anthony Richardson, who still has a whole lot to learn, will be getting the start for the Miami Dolphins. So you can't really even look at the numbers in terms of what they've done this year in terms of passing yards and scoring offense and all that when you look at for this game, because this is going to be a very different game from what we've seen from the Colts all year long. Anthony Richardson back in the lineup, no Jonathan Taylor, really injured receiving core. I don't know slightly what this offense is going to look like. And then on the other side of the ball, the defense just keeps bleeding points. I mean, you look at what they've done so far this season. Jacksonville Jaguars gave up 37 points. A good performance last week against the Titans, but I mean, look. I think you, me, and Donovan could have gone out there against the Tennessee Titans and put up a, a decent performance. 29 points against the Texans. Uh, good performance against the Packers, although be against Will Levis, only giving up 16 points. 24 points uh, to the Colts, and again, 37 points to the Jaguars. Uh, this is a defense that you can score on. They're not really strong at any particular point on the defense. They really do rely on their offense to keep them in games. They really should have won that Jags game. Had the lead in the fourth quarter, however... Unable to stop the Jags in the fourth quarter. I think they, the two teams combined for like a, a combined 24 points in that fourth quarter alone. It was a really exciting game at the end. Uh, but this team certainly can be attacked on the defensive side of the ball. And then on the offensive side of the ball, again, just not knowing what you're going to get. If Anthony Richardson plays at the top of this game, he is and can be one of the best quarterbacks in the league. However, if you get anything but that, you see wide open throws missed. You're not getting as much mobility out of, out of him as you thought. And maybe that was due to an injury he stayed earlier in the season and then it flared up in, in, in that uh, Steelers game, the oblique injury. I'm not really quite sure what it is, why he's so injury prone. But we're not seeing him move as much as we expected him to. It's just a really weird case of so much potential, but just qu not quite there yet with Anthony Richardson. So, Again, your guess is as good as mine as to what we will see from this Colts offense when it comes to Sunday. This might be the first time all season that we've said this, but as when it comes to the Dolphins, I think the Dolphins are the team you know exactly what to expect relative to what you see on the other side of the ball. And this is the first time, I think, like I just said, I think this is the first time that I can say this all year long. The, the points still aren't quite there. The big plays aren't quite there. We're seeing long, sustained drives. We saw that against the Patriots, a game that I liked a lot more than most Dolphins fans did in understandable reasons why a lot of Dolphins fans wouldn't have liked that performance against the Patriots. Only went 15-10, to 10, a one-score game. Patriots have the ball with seconds left. If they have a timeout, they have the ball, I think it was within the 10-yard line, within the 15-yard line, whatever it is. Really good opportunity there to score, uh, including Jalen Polk. If he just didn't get that heel down, would have taken the lead. And I don't know if I would have trusted the Dolphins offense to move down the field uh, and get up three points or get a touchdown. Uh, but what we did see was long, sustained drives. In the fourth quarter, we really saw the running game step up, and Raheem Mostert coming back to the team, I think, is a massive comeback. That I don't think a lot of, enough Dolphins fans are talking about enough what he brings to this team. A little bit more of a physical element running between the tackles, where Devon, Ch Devon Achan is the big play 
outside guy in the running game, but you need that ability to run between the tackles. And I really expect this Dolphins team to see a lot of Raheem Mostert on Sunday, a lot of Devon Achan on Sunday. And hopefully that then does open it up for Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill to finally find that big play, to finally find the back of the end zone once again, as points have been at premium for this Dolphins offense. But another week that Tyler Huntley has got to sit there as the one. Get more comfortable with Mike McDaniel and this playbook and what is asked of him. Get more comfortable with Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle and understanding where they are going to be and where he needs to give them to ball, give, get the ball for them to have the biggest success. Is that defense on the Colts that the Dolphins can put points on even if we're not at 100%? And then the defense just has to rattle Anthony Richardson. The biggest thing is getting to him, and it's going to be difficult to do so. Obviously, still down your top two pass rushers. Jalen Phillips out for the season. Bradley Chubb, God knows when he get, ends up coming back. So we need big games from younger guys like Chop Robinson, Muhammad Kamara. Hope that Emmanuel Ogba can end up playing here. Get pressure on Anthony Richard in the secondary, which has been arguably not just not just on the defense, but entirety of the team. The defense, uh, or sorry, the secondary has arguably been the best positional group so far this season. They've done a great job. They just haven't seen that same resiliency in front of them. And when the quarterback can sit there and get a lot of time in the pocket, eventually guys are going to come open. But I like what I've seen from Ramsey. I like what I've seen from the secondary group. Cam Smith should be coming back from injury. It's hard for me to say, but it might be even harder for you guys to hear at home with all that we've had to deal with as Dolphins fans. But I really expect the Dolphins to win this game for everything I just talked about on both sides of the ball between both teams. The Colts dealing with all their injuries. No star running back. Even their backup in uh, backup running back and Trey Sermon, for one, isn't good, but it's also uh, also injured. I had to pick up Tyler Goodson in fantasy. And to be fair, appreciate you, Tyler Goodson, for winning my matchup last week where I, where I started you. But they're probably going to have to rely on a third-string running back. Anthony Richardson so inconsistent. Michael Pittman's hurt. He might miss the game. Uh, Josh Downs is hurt. He might miss the game. Defense on the other side is not that good. And the Dolphins, perfect position coming off of a bye week. Mike McDaniel. It was a really well-coached game from him against the Patriots. Could have very easily been a two- or three-score victory for the Dolphins uh, two Sundays ago against the Patriots. Individual errors make it so that's 15-10, to 10, but ultimately got the win, and I think Mike McDaniel was the biggest person to thank for the victory against the New England Patriots. Colts are in a really bad spot right now. The Dolphins, with all things considered, still another week without two or in about as good of a situation can be, about as healthy as they have been all season. No Javon Holland probably. Jalen Phillips out for the season. Another week still without Tua, but the rest of the complimentary pieces and star pieces should be there for the Miami Dolphins. So I do have the Miami Dolphins winning this kind of in a similar fashion to the against, against the Patriots game. I don't expect this to be a high-scoring affair, so I am going to go with a Miami Dolphins victory of a final score of 21-13 to over the Indianapolis Colts, getting our third win in the last 10 matchups, extending the all-time series lead to 49 and 28. Let me know your score predictions down below. Let me know your expectations. Are we on the positive side? Are you a little bit pessimistic? What do you think of Anthony Richardson versus Joe Flacco? Let us know down below in the comments while down there. Hit that like button. Hit that sub button. Let us know where y'all be watching from. I'll probably be watching from Hooters. So let us know down below in the comments where you'll be watching this game from. Have a great rest of your day. Enjoy the game on Sunday. Go Dolphins.